Emily Miller from the Washington Times joins us on the uh, program now. Emily, good evening to you. Good evening, Cam. And I'll say Cameron Gray is one of my favorite producers of all time as well. Yeah? <laughs> How about Polka? Do you like Polka? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't have a strong opinion Do you on like Polka. Polka better or worse than you like DC's Gun Laws? Um, I've put DC's Gun Laws at the bottom, so I think <laughs> Polka would be above it. <laughs> you... I think probably Barack Obama would be above DC's Gun Laws. Yeah. Wow. Wow, yeah, that's I mean, how I mean, that. that's how rotten they are. You know, and this is amazing. Uh, you, you, your latest piece in the Washington Times, uh, you say Washington D.C. police appear prepared to arrest gun owners even if they aren't breaking the law. Uh, what what's going oh. on here? The, you say the city is giving out false information in written and verbal form on gun laws. And this, you know, Cam, we've talked for months on the series I've been doing in the Washington Times about getting first getting a gun in D.C. and now being a gun owner in D.C. And this has been the most outrageous to me. And I think I do say that to you every week. <laughs> but this time, I've uncovered going through the D.C. police, you know, when, as a gun owner, you have to both, uh, if it's your home state, I don't live in a state, I live in D.C., but, you know, my home jurisdiction, as well as if you're visiting D.C. or going through, or trans going through D.C., you look at the state's laws so you know how to legally transport a gun. And the registry office, the firearm registry office, which is run under the Metropolitan Police Department, is in charge of disseminating this information as well as advising people to call. They have been giving out things that are not law, R completely wrong. And I, and I verified this by talking to the man who wrote the law, D.C. Councilman Phil Mendelson, told him what I've been told by the, by the D.C. registry office. And he said, literally, he said, they're making this stuff up. And, you know, normally in these stories of D.C., I, you know, you and I laugh, and I know this is just, you know, how they make this stuff up. But right. This is, really, this is really frightening stuff because when you talk about firearm laws and transporting, you'll spend two days in jail if you do it wrong. You may not be – it's false arrests are very frequent. It happens in D.C. a lot. It's a, you know, there's a lot of tourists coming through the city. And if the laws are not given accurately, you're going to end up with false arrests or you're going to end up with your guns. Um, confiscated, which I know of several cases, which I'll be writing about in the future, of guns being confiscated for no apparent reason. And the problem is the police don't understand what the laws are, or they refuse to write them properly. The way the laws are actually pretty simple; they're very similar to the federal laws. When you come to D.C., you have to take you can as long as you're taking your gun from a place where you can legally care uh, possess and carry, which is in D.C. my home. Mm -hmm. You're not in D.C. You're coming from, say, Virginia. So let's say you coming from Virginia, and you're going to Maryland. So for me, coming from D.C., you can take it from some place you're legally possessing and carrying to another place you're legally possessing and carrying. I can go to Virginia. You would be able to drive through D.C. from Virginia to Maryland, say. And that, that's it. That's the only thing. And if so, you need to put your gun in your trunk. If you don't have a trunk, you need to be locked. It's like I have an SUV in the back. That's right. the law. And obviously, you're only transporting it for legal reasons. We're not talking about the criminals. We're talking about, you know, law-abiding citizens. Right. Well, then you've got the, the way it's written out in the this packet of paper that's given out to all gun owners in D.C. or on their website, if you look at the D.C. Fire and Registry Office, is that you have to be going directly to a, a firearm-related activity, which includes shooting, hunting, or going to registry office. That's not true. It also says you have to be going directly to or from. I called the registry office, and I said, okay, if I'm going shooting, because I was scared of your shooting, if I'm going to the target shooting, what, you know, what if I have to get gas? What if I have to go to the bathroom? You know, what if I want to get food? And they said, you, you can't. You cannot do those things. Yeah. And if you do, you're going to have to convince the officer, if you get pulled over, that you are going someplace legally. And that if you say, and, and this officer volunteer this information if you get pulled over you have to say i'm i have a firearm in my car and you have to tell them that and then they can decide to whether or not it's legal because you've been transporting into a place legally and i that part by the way is also not true that if you are pulled over in dc one you do not have to say that you're carrying a firearm that's in these documents, it's not true. Okay. And if you're asked if you're carrying a firearm, you have the constitutional right to say no. I interviewed Richard Gardner. 
You, I'm sorry, you interviewed Richard Dude, Gardner? I'm sorry. I just lost you for a sec. I interviewed Richard Gardner, who's Dick Heller, who we famously know overturned, um, took the case to the Supreme Court and overturned the gun ban in D.C. And he, you know, just so I had, had a firearm attorney checking these things, I knew a lot of people were paying attention. And he said, um, you know, it's pulled over. It's your constitutional right to say nothing if you're asked if you have a firearm. If you're legally carrying a firearm, Normally, you wouldn't have a problem, but in this case with D.C., the police don't know what the correct laws are. They're giving out incorrect information. So, quite frankly, I would suggest to anyone who's transporting a firearm through the city in any capacity, whether resident or non-resident, if you're pulled over, don't volunteer the information. If asked, keep quiet, don't say anything, and, you know, if something happens, then call an attorney. But as long as you're legally transporting a firearm, mm -hmm. it should be okay. Um but, you know, there's a lot of cases of false arrests in D.C. or guns being confiscated. And, you know, it's a serious problem. And the, the D.C. police really need to update this website with correct laws information as well as updating the paperwork they're giving out. Well, absolutely. Uh, I mean, you know, again, if, if so do you think, Emily, is this intentional? Is this the, uh, the city just uh, deciding that it is not going to provide uh, the correct information, again, to try to make it, seem like uh, uh, owning a firearm is a, a much more difficult process in the District of Columbia? I believe so, because, you know, I've now been a gun owner for, you know, six weeks, and I didn't want to take my gun out of my home because these laws are so, first of all, they're confusing in the way they're written and the way they're, they're given to the public. And, you know, you look, I've looked at other states, I've gone to it, I've looked at Virginia, it's very clear how the gun laws are if you want to transport your gun, but in D.C., it's not clear, and because of that, I was really nervous about it. So that's why I called the registry office and talked with Officer Harper and asked him all these questions um, so that I could sort of understand it. But even then, I got it. I was nervous. I was insecure about doing this because you don't want to be – I mean, everyone knows. The last thing you want to do if you're transporting a firearm is be pulled over by a cop who doesn't know what the laws are or pulled over in a city who doesn't know what the laws are. It can really create – I mean, I'm – I would say that for sure these laws are written in a way that are so convoluted that anybody who's not a resident of D.C. and is a firearm owner does not go through the city. They go the long way around. I'm sure of it because there's two different laws, and I won't even get into details. There's two different laws that apply to non-residents that conflict each other. There's just no way anybody who's a non-resident would come through the city having seen the two different laws. Um, and as far like once I talked to Richard Gardner, a lawyer, and I'd read the laws for myself, and I'd talked to the city councilman who actually wrote the laws. Mm -hmm. Having knowing all that information, this week is past week, and I felt finally felt calm enough and, and secure enough that I drove with my gun. I put it in my car, locked it in the box. I then went to Starbucks and had a coffee, and then I went to the, the shooting range, Sharpshooters in Virginia. And afterwards, I stopped and had lunch before I came back. So you know. Just knowing what the laws were and knowing what my rights were completely changed my ability to train with my firearm and my ability to move around the city and, and, and neighboring states. But I'm absolutely, and I, you know, this whole, my investigation of the transport law started by my talking to Phil Mendelson last week at a city council vote where they were voting on, on decreasing some of the regulations to registration in the city. And I said, you know, I'd really like to see you do something about clarifying the transport laws. And I started telling him the information I was getting about, you can't stop for gas, you can't stop for food. And he said they're making this up. So once I knew that, I knew that the person who had written the laws was saying that the interpretation was wrong. And that's when I knew that, you know, not only me, but anybody, especially D.C., who is such a tourist-friendly city, was going to be confronted with these confusions. And, you know, I, he wasn't offering to change anything. <laughs> he wasn't offering to rewrite, and he wasn't offering to talk to them. So, you know, it really does need to be done, and it needs to be corrected. But, you know, the intent of D.C. is to make it as difficult as possible for us. Isn't that amazing? I mean, you again, you as a D.C. resident point out this problem to a D.C. council member who says, oh, that's, uh, that's a problem. He wrote and, the law. And, and, and doesn't say he's going to fix it. No, no. I mean, you read my story. He's, he's, he's shocked. He said, who told you this? And where did you hear this? And I said, sir, it's written. <laughs> it's the documentation that's given to, to gun owners. It's the documentation that's given to people driving through the city. This is 
not to mention this is all the stuff that I'm told by these officers. And nothing changed. You know, that was a week ago. So I'm hopeful that my story is going to push them this time to put in writing what the actual transport laws are in this city so that people aren't falsely arrested and to also tell the officers out there in the police department, these are the laws. As long as they are going from one place where they can legally carry and possess to another, right. that's it. They do not need to prove, which is in the law now, if you're a non-resident of D.C., and this is, I think, the biggest part of this problem is the non-residents. If you're a non-resident of D.C., you have to prove, show proof to the officer that you're going to a firearm-related activity, and you have to show proof to the officer that your gun is legal in the state you came from. Which, as you know, you're a Virginia resident. How, how in the world would you ever prove that your gun is legal? Right. You can't. Yeah. So, you know, it's really, it's, it's this, this problem of the transport laws is a problem for D.C. residents. It's a bigger problem for American citizens who, you know, want to pass through their, their capital. And, you know, there's been a lot of people been falsely arrested because of this problem. Right. Absolutely. So, Emily, uh, again, you're hoping that the council is going to address this at their next meeting. Now, when will that be? Well, I'm actually, ho- I'm hoping, I don't think it's going to ha- it can't be, and Phil Mendelson, the councilman who's written these laws, said to me, you know, I don't know how to legislate. And he was sort of frustrated in this conversation because I don't know how to further legislate. But she has a point, and the legislation is there. It's, it's reading it. The problem is, it said, you know, the rest of the country does not have time that I have time as a reporter to spend to read the laws, to talk to lawyers, to talk to councilmen, to talk to the police. They need to see this on a website, on paper, properly. And at this point, it's up to the city, and the mayor needs to decide this, that he's going to put the proper laws up on the website, in paper, and correct them and take down all the false information that's being given and all the untrue information because, you know, that's what's going to get people in trouble. Absolutely. Listen, Emily, thank you again for coming on the program. It's always good talking to you, and uh, keep doing the great reporting you're doing from our nation's capital, will you? Thank you. Of course I will. I'll stay on it. Appreciate it.